The pain the world puts us through, we are not the target. It is because Jesus hangs on us. <laughs> the nails you feel with the attacks that are coming against you is not designed for you. It is coming against you because Jesus hangs on you. Good morning and welcome. Thank you once again for joining us on our Sunday morning service. To all our Trinity patrons, members around the world, thank you for making me your shepherd. And it is my privilege to lead people of such wisdom in, in, the, in the knowledge of God, in the understanding of God. It, it blesses our hearts. Nash and I are, are so blessed to have you in our lives. You know, um, I want to take a little time to thank every person who pays their tithe into our ministry. The ministry doesn't run on air. And so when you are convicted by God to make this ministry sustainable, I say a prayer over everyone that contributes. That God will continue to give you the ability to make his kingdom prosper. And I want to thank you once again. That it might not be easy for many of you to make a tithal sacrifice. But I want to assure you that God's uh, eye is always on the conviction he puts upon your heart. So once God convicts you. And you follow that, his eye and favor rests upon you. May God bless you. Beloved, I'm preaching to you, I'm recording this on our 25th birthday, the 31st of January. And uh, you know, we were looking back at our history. And I can tell you, I think I shared with you before, that before we opened uh, a very high ranking intercession spirit intercession of darkness spoke to me through a possessed man who was the head intercessor at a church at a very large ministry and that spirit spoke to me things that I have now accomplished that I never thought I'd accomplish because the spirits of darkness can see where God is and what he normally achieves through his servants. And one of the things that was so alarming was that he said that every step we take, the demons, the principalities and powers will try and block us. And that spirit didn't fail. Every step we, we took, from within there was attacks from within our leadership there were attacks from financially there were attacks there were attacks from every angle and you know on this first night that we opened on the 31st of January when Nash and I went back home we hardly had anything but our home was broken into we reached home at half past 12 midnight after the service the opening service and our house was burgled and they took whatever little valuables that we had including our television set and it was so heartbreaking that after we opened in such a glorious moment that we could suffer such uh, such an attack and you know I look back and on that very opening night the devil wanted to bring in discouragement and you know it never stopped so every time anyone thinks of being used to come against this ministry I want you to really understand that that God is the protector of what he has established so may God bless you all for being part 
and parcel of our family. You are in the right place. And I, you know, I am doing everything I can to prepare your soul so that the enemy does not snatch it before the Lord comes. Now, we're going to have communion, so have your communion elements ready for later. I'm going to start uh, by what we shared last week and the week before. Let's, let's, I, I, I want to take this a step further before I, before I continue with this morning's teaching. This morning's teaching is going to be a bit frightening, I have to tell you. It's, um, but it's going to prepare you. So let's start with this. I wanted to explore. You know we spoke about a dirty gut. An imbalanced, dysfunctional gut. Where, uh, and the gut being the place where the soul resides. And when the gut is in balance, when the good and bad, bad, bad bacteria, the microbiome of the gut is in balance, where the soul lives, uh, every organ functions accordingly. And, and moreover, the soul lives there because evil is not there, dysfunction is not there, function is there. So the soul lives there and it has direct contact with God so that you can see the things that others cannot see. You can hear from God the directions and steps that you need to take in your life for decision making. That's why when somebody is depressed, when somebody is angry, it means that there's an imbalance of the gut. And when there's an imbalance, they cannot make rational decisions because of the evil or imbalance or dysfunction that is taking place. And so we're looking, I was looking at the characteristics of a person with a dirty gut. And you know, there's so many. But I just wanted to highlight six of them. One of them, when you notice a, an arrogant person, a person who always wants to be right, arrogantly speaking to others, when you, when in your mind, you must now imagine what a dirty gut must be inside there. The next personality is a person who will be cruel. Bad temperament. Disagreeableness. Bossy attitude. And selfishness. You know we spoke in detail about selfishness a while ago. And I hope that it was illuminating to you about Wanting everything for self and nothing generally uh, generating unto others from self. And when you look at that type of person, the first thing you need to know is that that gut, oh, what a dirty, nasty gut that is uh, inside there. But, but if a person cleans the inside, then there's a restoration the character changes or if the character changes then the gut imbalance changes to functional now if you didn't figure this out by now jesus mentioned something about a dirty gut he inferred i should say in the book of mark it's also in kabbalah other gospels as well but mark 7 when jesus was talking he said what comes out of a man that defiles a man, makes a man dirty? For from within, out of the heart of man, and we learned last week that that word heart means gut. It comes from the word kardian in Greek. It means the inner man, the inner space, the gut of a man. So Jesus' words were, for from within, out of the gut of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Jesus could have went on. 
all these evil things come from within and they defile the man these are the people with the dirty gut they might come to church some might even pay tithes but there's one thing about their character that defiles them and people it will it, it, they will do very well to recognize how nasty they have been to their husbands to people that are under them at work it will be nice for them to see in the mirror through what i'm sharing what character they have and it defiles that person but what's more alarming is that they these people many of them who are christian by the way many 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 they come to church they faithful with their giving but there's one thing that they will suffer miscommunication with god simply because that gut is impure when you have a dysfunctional gut or an evil gut the soul cannot reside there anymore these are the people whose prayer goes unanswered many of these people who are nasty who are bossy who who are selfish cruel um, you know the list goes on um these people many of them are rich many of them have a lot of money but they have sicknesses because their bowels cause all sorts of parts of their body all organs certain organs to break down and not all, any of their money will be able to repair and restore and their prayer many of them go unanswered and they wonder why does my prayer go unanswered it's like god does not hear me and what's even more alarming to them is that they cannot hear from god and many of them become broken and backslidden because they feel like god has abandoned them in reality they have abandoned god and so there is an uh, a wavering and in the last days god said there will be people who will be lovers of themselves uh, fornicators all sorts of things paul mentioned to us that they will be in the last days which means that many of them will fall away from god more people will go to church but more than that will fall away it's called the apostasy coming away from god and that's the prediction of revelations so as people moreover believers become nasty chasing after their own ambitions um em- employing these different characteristics in the hope of getting ahead in life they turn their gut into a dysfunctional place which removes the presence of god from them which disconnects them from god and their prayers go unanswered and they become disillusioned because they feel god is not answering them so in order to correct this these things are simple adjustments you need to make with your character if that is you and because of this character flaw dysfunction they have relationship issues they might have money they might have power they might have position but their relationships fall apart they they the love that they experience in their lives seem to abandon them and that becomes disillusioning to them and jesus is saying listen it's not because of what the people are eating that is making them sick and nasty it's because of what's inside of them and as the number of these people grow in the world they become weapons of the of the devil satan's weapons and as the number grows the number of weapons that satan has grows and the devil uses the dysfunctioning of that gut 
which turns into nasty characters to become weeds among the wheat and they start to poke you they start to try and cause stress upon your life they, st they start to try and disillusion you and depress you for the goal is if they depress you then you become a dirty gut as well an imbalanced gut because the stress they put on you makes you uh, dysfunctional which makes you now part and parcel of the weaponry that Satan has. So I need you to remove yourself. Sometimes you might have family members, you might have friends that make you feel guilty to accommodate their madness. And that guilt causes, put stress on you. And that stress causes a dysfunction in the bowels. So I'm asking you to have your eyes wide open so that the devil can use no weapon against you. Whether it's people you work with, whether it's family members, whether it's neighbors. You just think in your mind, what a dirty gut. That's all. Nasty gut. So be careful that they do not cause you who are children of God to follow their path and uh, cause depression. And angst in your life. Now science is helping us. To see the point Jesus was making. In the Lancet study. We see this article come up. Increasing preclinical and clinical studies. Have highlighted. That the compositional and functional. There's that word functional. Good. Metabolite changes in gut microbiota known as dysbiosis are associated with the onset and progression of depression via regulating the gut brain axis. So if your brain is depressed, your gut is affected. That's what science is telling us. Listen, the devil has given these dysfunctional people with dirty guts the power to try to convert you and transform you into one of them I want you to be aware we'll take a reading of the book of John 15 if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you? A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will, persecute, they will also persecute you. Who is Jesus talking about? The dirty hearted people, dirty gut people. These are the people who are going to, you, to do to you what they did to Jesus. And so don't get surprised when suddenly someone who was good to you turns nasty. Because the closer you get to God, the more the weapons will rise up. The weapons of darkness. The dirty hearts. They'll rise up. From out of the blue. And you will get stunned. One of the reasons I'm sharing this with you. Is because you must always anticipate. These things. You know. <clears throat> Jesus took the time. To prepare his disciples. For what was to come. That's why they were not surprised when they were uh, put to the slaughter, when they were tortured, when they were imprisoned. They were not surprised. They were anticipating it. Why? Because Jesus prepared them. And this is why, this is where false teachers benefit. Because they like to say things that people's itching ears like to hear. What when people are going through problems, 
when they go to going through attacks when when life is not beautiful for them they look for a way of escape they look for a quick fix to get out of this uh, torture out of this position that they are in and if a preacher comes along and speaks sweet words that there is a way one prayer from the hand of this man is going to remove those obstacles that are pursuing you and stressing you and if you ever fell victim to these false teachers that means jesus was warning us for no reason it also means that there is a quick fix to escape that the disciples themselves didn't know about for throughout their lives there was no recipe for escaping what jesus prophesied will happen to believers so i do, i i want to that's why it's hard for our people people that fall under my ministry to become disillusioned it's very hard because they prepare themselves for what is to come and because there's evil in this world you must expect attacks but there is a way of escaping let me show you what that way is jesus said it himself if you were of the world the world would love its own so if you want to escape these things that's why you'll see certain people who have no wisdom they just go on with life like nothing to worry about because the world loves them what they going through is not what you going through well jesus told us that that's why being a follower of christ takes a lot of guts and sacrifice and if you are still following the lord after everything oh let me tell you you've done very well you know throughout my preaching career i've been in full time ministry for more than 25 years going on 30 years now and uh, i can tell you that because the devil knew who i am those attacks never stopped but i was prepared for them and people who follow me are going to be prepared for them and nothing it might knock you out for a little while but you will be up again in no time i'm going to read to you two non canonical books books that were written a long time ago just after christ passed away a few uh, decades after that there's a book called the gospel of the savior and uh, it was written by a man called valentinus and it was discovered together with some of the new testament finds you know the book of matthew part of it most of the book of luke they were only found in 1945 so before that the bible did not have these scriptures in there until most of the fragments were found in 1945 according to clement of alexandria the disciples of valentinus said that valentinus was a student of a certain theodos who was a student of paul now valentinus himself claimed that theodos had imparted to him the secret wisdom that paul had taught privately to his inner circle which paul publicly publicly referred to in connection with his visionary encounter with the risen christ now you'll remember so you understand valentinus followed uh, theodos and theodos followed paul now there's another theodos in the bible uh, who was a very was a false prophet this is not that theodos now Theodos was a follower of of Paul close follower he was Paul's inner circle and Paul 
had several visions starting off when God made him blind and and then God uh, on his way to Damascus got blind he had an experience with the Lord he heard the Lord's voice God restored his sight and then after that he had several interactions that we know about that he had with God and God shared with him private wisdom I don't know if we can use that word private but wisdom and uh, and and these are secrets of the kingdom and and he shared these secrets only with his inner circle Paul may have written some stuff down that are not in the Bible but I haven't really found some of them that was mentioned but Valentina says and I can assure you Paul wrote a lot more than what we see in the Bible Valentina said Paul shared with him some secrets uh, because of all these experiences that he had uh, with God and, uh, and, and, he, and he took those words of Paul, those experiences, Theodos, and he shared it with his student Valentinus. So Valentinus put it in writing and uh, it became what we know as the gospel of the Savior. So I'm going to read to you some parts of it as we go through it so that uh, everything I'm sharing with you comes into perspective. But Paul's experience with God, I'll just read to you briefly so you understand. In uh, Romans, he shared with us a benediction. And uh, now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. That was the revelation or one of the revelation of the mystery that uh, God shared with Paul and then in 1st Corinthians he says but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory and then in 2nd Corinthians he says I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago whether in the body I do not know whether out of the body I don't know God knows such a one was caught up in the third heaven and I know such a man whether in the body or out of the body I do not know God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible inex words which is not lawful for a man to utter I think I misspoke earlier Valentinus wrote what we know as the gospel of truth so we're going to read to you from some of the mystery that Paul was sharing with his disciple who shared it with Valentinus in a prologue it says the proclamation of the truth is a joy for those who have received grace from the father of truth that they might learn to know him through the power of the word now that word is not the Bible remember I taught you that word means wisdom who is Jesus so through the power of the of the wisdom that emanated from the fullness that's God the Godhead that is in the father thought father's thought and intellect the word who is spoken of as Savior can you see Valentinus confirms what I've been teaching you for that is the term for the work that he was to accomplish to ransom those who had fallen ignorant of the father while the term proclamation refers to the manifestation of hope a discovery for those who are searching for him so if you're looking for the father if you're looking for God it is confirmed here that if you are searching for God you find Jesus the Savior the word not the Bible you find Jesus the Savior and he gives you a proclamation which means a hope within it's a manifestation of hope that's what proclamation we read if you look at that whole paragraph again you'll see in the top it says proclamation in the bottom it says proclamation refers to the manifestation of hope so when you find Jesus there's a hope in you that whatever is wrong in your life doesn't matter 
So long as you know Jesus, everything will be fine. That is the manifestation of hope. So when you manifest hope, there is no depression. There is no angst. There is no anger. There is, there is no nasty person coming out. When you know Jesus and he puts the proclamation, the, the manifestation of hope in you. But there are some people who are looking for the father and haven't found him. If they don't find Jesus, they don't have hope. And when they don't have hope and manifest hope, that means the gut becomes unhealthy, becomes dirty. They become angry, anxious, depressed, worry, stressed. All these things manifest. That's not a manifestation of hope. So, finding Jesus becomes a priority. And he said, if you knock, I will open. If I knock, you open, I come in. Now, the next paragraph says this, the origin of ignorance. Oh man, you got to understand this. It is so powerful. It talks about the creation, Valentinus. Inasmuch as the entirety, that means everything in the universe, had searched for the one from whom they had emanated. And the entirety was inside of him. So everybody, let's look at buddies. Everybody that God created was from inside of him. The inconceivable, who is God now, uncontained, who is superior to all thought. Ignorance of the father caused agitation and fear. So these people, when they become ignorant of God, don't understand or don't know, didn't find Jesus. He's confirming that they become agitated. They have fear. They have depression. They have worry. They have stress. And the agitation grew dense like a fog. So that no one could see. Thus error found strength and labored at her matter. Now there's a footnote at the point D footnote. Her matter means the material universe which belonged to error. Oh, I'm going to explain this to you so that your mind becomes illuminated. Some of you who have a sharp aptitude for wisdom might figure it out. But let's go. Thus error found strength and labored at her material universe which was in error, in emptiness. Without having learned to know the truth, she took up residence in a modeled form, preparing by means of the power in beauty, a substitute for truth. What is the proclamation of truth? Hope. When you have hope, you find Jesus, you have hope in the eternal God and everything will be okay. When you don't see clearly, when you have a dense fog and you can't find God because you don't know Jesus and there is no hope, you become agitated and you have fear and that fear results in anger, depression and so forth. This is what this part says. But then he says, you know what these people do, the ones that can't find God. Now I'm explaining to you in our layman's terms what that second part of the paragraph means. Paul was teaching that when these people's fog, when they have a fog, they can't find God. You know how they get satisfied? When the, the things of this world that they yearn after, the material world, when it's modeled and fashioned how they like it and it's beautiful, that is what Paul says is an error of judgment. Because they think, oh you must listen to this very carefully. They think that if their lives are beautiful, things work out. 
things are going very well that is the manifestation of god the beauty of their life oh we living such a glorious life oh we got a big house oh we bought this and everything is working out what a blessing it's nice to be a blessing but when you start to put emphasis on being blessed then you have misjudged god because god puts hope in those even though their lives are not beautiful i hope you are understanding this so let's put it this way now if my life is stressed if i have let's say i need money for 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 um for my bond or for my house or for my whatever um or i need um i need healing for my body they think god is manifest in when these things work out then god is manifest if these things don't work out there is no manifestation of god and so this is where the false preachers come in they try to tell you i will make these things work out for you you give certain amount you come for a certain prayer meeting you do a certain thing and once you do these things you know like witchcraft sort of you do these things here yeah, things will work out for you and uh, and that camouflages that's why when you get an unbeliever and many people get excited that hey they i brought my neighbor he was not a christian he came to church and uh, the pastor laid hands on him the next day all the problems were gone and they gave the hearts to the lord they gave the hearts to the lord why because their life became beautiful and god is saying that's an error in judgment it's an error those are the words he used it's an error um there's a fog so be careful that you don't only feel blessed when things are going well and god's children things do go well i'm not saying no but don't god is in the things that are also not going well and you need to praise him in the good times and praise him in the bad times you cannot allow stress and agitation when stress and agitation comes into your life it means there's a fog fog means your there's an imbalance here in your gut which corrupts your communication with god which means that is fogged and that results in agitation and fear or the fear and agitation results in that and then you bluff yourself that if the problem gets sorted out then then i know god you know god is in my life god has blessed me with this and that's not the case oh i'm going to get deeper into this and i hope some of you understand this it's not the beauty of life that speaks to the existence of god the existence of god exists even if material things in the world are not going beautiful let's understand that and let it soak in so it doesn't mean you're going through issues that god is not there that he doesn't know how many of you think god doesn't know anything what i'm going through so i have to pray to him and say the same thing 50 times he knows everything he wants you to manifest the hope in glory of god when you start to manifest hope even in times of despair then you know god that's what he's saying then you know god and there'll be no agitation no fear no, nothing will 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 make this disfunction when you know christ and i want every follower everybody who gives their souls for me to shepherd i want to see that character shine through all the trials and the tribulations that should stress normal people you i want you to rise above that there must be a manifestation of hope i hope you can understand it it's a it's a tall ask but god expects nothing less from his children
Did you not notice what the disciples went through? The, the hatred they experienced against them. The torture, the punishment, the imprisonment. Most of them died by crucifixion and beheading. Did you notice that they wrote with hope? They never give because they, 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 they were, there was no fog. They were not fearful. They were not agitated. They were not depressed. None of them. So God could communicate to them and they could communicate to God. And I want the same for all of you that are watching. So when you go to work and there's a miserable person there who makes your life miserable, gossips about you to the boss, uh, makes you do work that belongs to them and then take the credit for it. All these nasty things go on there. Don't think only when that problem is solved. The problem means that people must leave. Then um, you must have hope. Then you must have joy. Then, no, your joy must come despite those people. I hope you're understanding me. Because those are weapons that the devil is going to use throughout your life. I'm preparing you. So, in short, be at peace despite the material world not being beautiful. Now we go to the gospel of the Savior, which I mistakenly mentioned before. The gospel of the Savior, this document was found even before Matthew and Luke were found, parts of them rather, in 1896 and they were found in Egypt. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing Oxyrhynchus, that was the discovery. Many other scriptures were found at the Oxyrhynchus uh, find. And one of them was part of the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, the, the, the Matthew, it was called Papyrus 64. This papyrus fragment was discovered by Grenfell and Hunt of the Egyptian Expl Exploration Society at the site of Oxyrhynchus in 1897 at the beginning of several seasons of excavations that took place at the site from 1896 to 1907. The name Oxyrhynchus means bent nose, comes from the type of fish that was sacred to the ancient Egyptians. The town of Oxyrhynchus is 300 kilometers south of Alexandria and so forth. This portion of Matthew was only included in the Bible after it was found in 1897. Which part? Matthew 26, this portion. He answered and said, he who dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. This talks about Judas. And how he dipped in the bread, the bread in the bowl with Jesus to identify him as the one who Satan entered. Now, without this. So, let's put it this way. The only the people after it was published and put into this Bible that we have, did the people know about this. Before that, they didn't know. And then, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. And they were eating. Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Without that part, we wouldn't have the knowledge of some of the things that are written there. Then Peter's, Peter, Jesus predicts Peter's denial. And you'll see it there. Uh, that part would have been missing because uh, that parts of Matthew was only included after that, that portion. Then we see uh, Luke has the same the, a massive part of Luke, Luke from chapter 3 right till chapter 24 uh, wouldn't have been in the Bible before 1897 and it was only published much later and put into the New Testament that we have today. Uh, so these portions, I mean, you know, the time when Jesus was 12 years old, it only appears in Luke. You wouldn't have found this, you wouldn't have known about his early life. He, his birth, the story about uh, Augustus uh, Caesar, and then the raising the widow's uh, son, the parable of the lost coin, parable of the unjust steward. There's just so much that Christians only came to know after 1897. So that's one of the reasons why it's hard if, if people still don't understand that the word is not the Bible. And the portion, the Bible that you see today is not what, is not complete. Still not complete. It's what the Catholics wanted to put together. Uh, although the writings are holy and sacred, but not complete. So they can never equal to Jesus. Jesus is the word. So we'll read to you this gospel of the Savior. It was written by one of the apostles. We're not sure where. Nobody is nobody's sure who was writing it. But if you read it, you'll understand. It's, now, much of this has been burnt 
and uh, parts of it are missing. So when we read through it, we'll choose the passages that we can comprehend and understand. And I found it very illuminating. So the gospel of the Savior. Now then, as long as you are in the body, Jesus' words, do not let matter rule over you. I think we spoke in detail about that just now. Rise, let us leave this place, Jesus said. For the one who will betray me is at hand, speaking of Judas. It happened one day that the Savior was sitting on the Mount of Olives before the lawless Jews crucified him. And all of us were gathered with him. That's telling, telling us that this is one of the apostles. He replied and said, my holy members gather unto me. I will sing the praise of the cross and you respond after me. Now it seems that Jesus was singing a praise. He was actually literally talking to a cross from this point of view of the reading. But I'm going to give you a deep, deeper understanding. So Jesus wanted to sing praises to the cross, the cross on which he was going to be hanged now. And you respond, he says, you respond after me, he's telling his disciples. And we, were made a, and we made a circle and surrounded him. He said to us, I among you as children, he said, Amen. A little while I am with you in your midst, but they are now plotting against me. Do not hold me back, O cross. So he's saying the cross, I know you feel bad. But don't hold me back. I'm coming to be hanged on you. And he sings the first praise. Praise to the cross. He says, rise up, rise, O cross. You and you lift in. For this is your will. We don't know what that word's in between. O cross, do not be afraid. I am rich. I will fill you with my riches. I will mount you. I'm coming upon you, O cross. I will be hung upon you as a testimony among them. Do not weep, O cross, but rather rejoice and know that your Lord is coming to you and he is gentle and humble. The second praise to the cross is called a second dance. A little while, O cross, and what is lacking will become perfect and what is wasted will be replenished. A little while, O cross. And what has fallen will rise. A little while, O cross, and the entire fullness will be complete. I see you and I laugh. Many people too. I have looked for you. One laughing and rejoicing, another weeping, mourning and grieving. Be eager for me, O cross. And I also will be eager for you. You and I together cross. We are brothers. We are strangers. And we couldn't understand that. And together or cross. Otherwise, whoever is far from you is far from me. So give me your power, my father. So that they may endure the world. He's still talking to the cross. But at this time he says... They and they that gives us a clue. Amen. With me, amen. I have taken to myself the scepter of kingship crown. Them in humility without their having I have reigned. My father, you will have my enemies obey me. Amen. Through whom will the enemy be destroyed? Through the cross. Through whom will the sting of death perish? It's not there, but through the cross. And then the Savior comforts the apostles. Now after Jesus had finished the entire glorification of his father, he turned to us and said to us, The hour is at hand when I will be taken from you. The spirit indeed is eager, but the flesh is weak. So remain and stay awake with me. But we apostles wept, saying to him, So if you are afraid, the Son of God, then what are we to do in turn? He replied and said to us, Do not be afraid of perishing, but rather take heart. Let your gut be fine. Do not be afraid of the authority. Remember all things I have said to you. For if they have persecuted me, they will be persecuted you. Oh my God, we read that in the gospel before. 
so you should rejoice for i have overcome the world mm. the revelation of this is very chilling people i'm going to reveal this to you now and i want to you to hang on to your hats pay very careful attention to this mystery of the cross firstly who is the cross the cross he was talking about is the apostles you remember we shared them the apostles but not just the apostles every believer is a cross he was going to hang on every believer because his sacrifice was for every believer so when he spoke about the cross it was figurative it was meaning i am speaking to you the children of god i am coming to hang on you and these words will ring stronger if you understand it now we'll reread some of it so if you replace the cross with you put your name there do not weep oh adrian but rather rejoice and i know that your lord is coming to you a little while oh brandon but rather rejoice and know that your lord is coming to you a little while oh jackson and what is lacking will become perfect and in what is wasted will be replenished a little while O cross and what has fallen will rise be eager for me and I will also be eager for you you and I together O cross we are brothers for whoever is far from you is far from me so give me your power my father so that they may endure the world oh my god he's talking about you through whom will the enemy be destroyed through nancy through jessica through bob through frank every child of god is a cross why is he a cross let's look deeper he says he's coming to be hanged on you be eager he says do not weep do not cry do not be anxious have no fear He says I'm coming to you I'm going to be hanged on you oh my I'm going to be mounted on you Don't be afraid If I'm be mounted on you they're going to nail me to you and you're going to feel me being nailed to you The punishment they put on me you're going to feel it throughout your life but as long as i am hanging on you i'll pray to the father on your behalf and father give me the power to help the cross to deliver the world and to come through so listen mm, 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 mm. the pain the world puts us through we are not the target it is because jesus hangs on us <laughs> the nails you feel with the attacks that are coming against you is not designed for you it is coming against you because jesus hangs on you he is mounted on you and so when they poke your side when they put thorns in your head when they spit on you when they mock you when they do all sorts of things against you for my sake count it all joy so beloved he you are only being persecuted so as long as he's hanging on you expect it that you will be attacked by these weapons of darkness circumstances that are created by the weapons of darkness will affect you prepare for it now listen if the beauty of this world goes with you if you are um 
uh, your life is only enhanced, your joy and hope is only enhanced by the beauty of this world, then, and you hardly get any attacks. You know, your life is going so smooth. You know, I go to this place for prayer and because of that, my life is going so well. Listen, that means Jesus does not hang on you. That means there's an absence of God on you. Means the, the weapons of darkness don't see you as a target. Why? Right? There's no Jesus on you. So the cross, oh my God. He is telling us what it's going to be like. He didn't tell his disciples. 2000 years ago he says, 4 AD, you guys are going to be blessed. 4 AD, you guys are going to have money coming in to your bank accounts. You're going to have more sandals than you can wear. You're going to have no dust fall on your feet. He didn't tell them that. He says, listen, I'm praying for you because I'm going to hang on you. And they're going to target me because of, because of you. Because of me, you're going to be a target. Let's see what John 16 says. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world. James tells us my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials. The cross was the instrument used by the devil to torture him. Jesus. We will be the instrument the devil uses to torture Jesus. So the fact that your life is going hay haywire sometimes. And in normal circumstances stress will fall upon you. In normal circumstances the things that are not beautiful in your life. Will make you depressed. But a child of God. Will stand up. Even if the beauty of this world is removed from you. It makes no difference. To your faith and the manifestation of hope you have in you. Why? Because Jesus hangs on you. And he'll pray to the father on your behalf. Now if Jesus decides that he wants, because he's been given the power. He wants to protect you from something according to his will. Then he will. But until then. You know, that's why when people, when preachers come and say 2024, oh, it's going to be like this. No, Jesus didn't tell that to his disciples. He prepared them for the hard attacks, for the knocks. Because if I hang on you, you are not superior to me. What they did to the master, they will do to you. Don't be afraid of the authorities. They will come against you. But as long as I am with you, who can be against you? They'll try. They might shatter your material world. They might shatter material things that money can buy sometimes. But one thing they won't do is touch your soul. And when I feel I am capable, that's why Jesus said, Father, give me the power. If, if, I want, if Jesus wants to remove certain things, say, Lord, it's up to you. And he saved so many apostles from so many things before. He took Paul out of jail. Saved him from the shipwreck. If God wants to. I am in God's hands. Other than that. I'm going to manifest, manifest the proclamation of hope. You see. Shepherds. That don't prepare their sheep. For the hard knocks. Tell them exactly. And they prepare hope. You know people have been. You'll hear this. Some of these false teachers, they say, you know, 2024, 2025, 20, whatever they told you, 2023, it was like the same of 2022. Nothing changed. But they want to put false hope because they want you to focus on the material changes that are going to take place in your life. The beautiful material changes and that will put hope in you. And that's what people want to hear. So this is one way of recognizing that you might be under a covering. Of that, uh, that cloud, that fog that God was talking about. So all the people who follow me understand. You will have your triumphs. You will have your victories. The devil might bring you to your knees sometimes. But you will get up. 
and understand that God is always with you. Wherever you are, he's hanging on you. In Jesus' name, understand and accept that. This is a mystery of Jesus. Beloved, let us take communion. We have the bread and the wine. And this is the blood and the body of Christ. Let us partake in it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us your flesh and pouring out that blood that you shed on Calvary, on that cross. Father, we ask that what you shed on the cross, you shed over us. That, Father, we have the benefits of having you in our lives. Our souls rest in the eternity of knowing that you are with us. Cover us with your blood, Lord. As we partake of communion, renew your relationship with us, even during this fast that many of us are on. I ask your mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us partake. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being part of our family. May God bless you. I'll see you again next week.